Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. This is the second part of my Negotiation 101 video series. There will likely be additional parts of this in the future because negotiation is an important topic, an important part of your reselling business that I notice a lot of people struggle with, not just online when negotiating with buyers, but also in person when I witnessed negotiations between people at garage sales and estate sales. It continues to amaze me how much money people wind up giving away in the negotiation process. Now, the first video that I did on this topic was about when you should be sometimes willing to walk away from the deal in order to make a deal. So check that video out. This particular video, as you can see, is called Take It or Leave It. I had the idea of doing this video this weekend after a couple of deals that I made uh, after which a buyer told me, well, this is the best I'm going to be able to do, and this is my final offer. And it turns out that that is not always the case. But a lot of people fall for that and believe that in the negotiation process, and they wind up leaving a lot of money on the table as a result of it. So I'm going to take you through a scenario uh, that happened earlier this week. And actually, it was this past weekend, and I'll I'll show you the whole negotiation process, how it kind of went down. But what what ultimately made me say that's it, I actually have to do this video was I was on my Instagram account, and if you're not following there, please check me out at Primetime Treasure. It's on Instagram. I post a lot of interesting things throughout the course of the day, and I think you'll find them helpful and hopefully inspirational. But um, I, I saw that there was uh, another person that I was following that received a message from a buyer, and it wasn't really nice. It was kind of a nasty message, uh, you know, basically take it or leave it with an exclamation point. This is the best you're going to get out of me, and then that's pretty much it. And um, so I, you know, I said, you know, that's it. I, I definitely have to make this video. So let me show you an example of what happened earlier this week. This is a Harley Davidson bandana. And on average, Harley Davidson bandanas sell for about $15. Now they could go higher. Depends on whether or not there's something special that you can attribute to the bandana. And this one, there's some special features to it. First of all, and I think most importantly, you'll see on the bottom here, there is United Steelworkers symbol. So anything that has to do with steelworkers and a union, uh, those are very, very popular. Guys love to wear that. So you, if you have a combination of somebody who loves Harleys, is involved in you know a Harley club, and he's also a steelworker, he's going to really, really want this bandana. Now, I did my research in advance. No one was selling this Harley bandana at the time that I had it up, and no one had it online in the last 60 days. So the other symbol that you're going to see up top here is uh, International Association of Machinists. Uh, so there's, um, and also uh, an aerospace worker. So that is another aspect that brings in a whole nother group of people if they happen to be associated with that group. So you have three different potential groups of people and different combinations of people that might be interested in this particular uh, a banner. And then you see here we have it also is another good feature of it is that it's a 110th anniversary of Harley Davidson and it's got the 110 going all around it. It's in very good condition. There's no flaws with the item whatsoever. It's got nice bright orange colors that contrast really well with the black. Uh, so it's really, really a great item. I actually wound up getting this at an estate sale as part of a huge collection of Harley Davidson items and other clothes. And this was just something just kind of tossed in there. It wasn't even something I originally intended on purchasing. I was interested in the shirts and the person made a deal with me at the uh, end of the estate sale uh, 
and just kind of threw all the clothes in at once. So I wanted to get this gigantic bundle of clothes. So this is all extra. Made back all my money from the uh, from the purchase. It was a purchase uh, for all these uh, clothes. It basically filled the back of my car from the from the seat to almost the ceiling with clothes for seventy dollars. It was a great deal. So. Uh, you know, made the money back real quick. And so these are just some additional items that I'm listing. So I put this up at $29.99. So just to talk to you a little bit about my pricing strategy on this, again, I know going into it that average would be $14.99. And I know this is a little bit better than average. Now, I do realize that, you know, double the price of the item is probably stretching it a bit, but you never know if somebody has a, you know, a, you know, some kind of deep personal attachment to the item. They really think it's cool. They really want it. They're usually going to be willing to pay a little bit more for it. But I put the price a little higher because I know that some people are going to come in with some lower offers, and I got to have a little bit of room to negotiate. Um, you know, so my items, I. Always put them up as buy it now best offers. So that's how that's how I handle it. So you know you got to be prepared in that situation that someone's going to offer you a little bit lower. So anyway, um, I had it up there, and my bottom line though for it, you know, and I know this going into the, going into the negotiating situation is that I really want to. I'll be happy selling it for for twenty dollars. I don't want to sell it for the average price because it's an item that is worth more than average because it is more than average. So don't sell yourself short. That's one of the key lessons to this is don't sell yourself short. So let's see what happened. Um, an offer comes in. You could see here for fifteen dollars. Now based on everything that I told you, what this person is doing is they are giving me the price of the average Harley bandana. But again, this is more than the average item. The other thing is the person's offering me half of what my uh, listing price is. And that's something that I just will not accept is half of what my listing price is. So I fi fire back a, uh, a counter offer and the way that I do the counter offers generally is I is if we're somewhat close, I will just split the difference in the middle. Now remember, I said that I would be happy at for, to take nineteen ninety nine for this. So what I did is just split the difference. So the difference between fifteen and um, thirty dollars would be um, fifteen dollars. So you divide that by two, so you got seven fifty. So I offered the person. 2250 and I sent along a nice little message which you'll see here which is you know hello and thanks for your offer I can meet you halfway at $22.50 with free shipping if that works this is yours thanks exclamation point so always keeping it positive and you know you also have to keep in mind that this is going to go first class shipping. First class shipping rates just went up. So even though it's a very light item it's you know still going to cost around you know 250 260 you know, 260 to, to ship so you know you got to factor that into it so um you know that's uh you know that's just something you have to consider as well always consider what your shipping costs are so send that off and the person writes back right here a counter offer of 1850 and here's the key word right here now it's not anything mean it's not anything rude but the person just says final offer Okay, now this is where a lot of sellers kind of freeze up and they get nervous because they say to themselves, okay, if I say no and if I decline it, then I just left $18.50 on the table. And a lot of people will tell you, just take it, just take it. But again, you have to know whether or not you have the leverage in this situation. So in this situation, again, I know I have a unique item. I know that this is something guys are going to want. I know this is something that if this guy doesn't take it for $19.99, which is the lowest I'm willing to go on it, and that truly is the lowest I'm willing to go, that somebody else is likely going to come along and buy this for $19.99 or higher and possibly for the buy it now price, but I have a guy who's interested in it right now, so I'm totally willing to wait uh, to make it try to make a deal with them. So 
you have to know if you have the leverage or not. Now, the converse situation would be if there are a lot of people who are selling this item and or, or if you had this item online for months and it just was not selling and this guy comes along and he gives you an offer of 1850 then in this situation you just probably would want to accept the the you know what he says is the final offer and take it but so in that situation the buyer would have the leverage cuz you know you've had this item up for such a long time or that there's a lot of them on the market and there's you know a lot of competition for it but you know in, in this in this situation I, as the seller, know that I'm the one with the leverage. No one else has it online. It's a really cool item, lots of unique features. So I know that I have the advantageous situation. So what I did, as you can see here, is I counter offered at $19.99. And I said, so basically what I'm doing is I'm flipping it on him. I said the lowest I can go is $19.99 with free shipping. And then I emphasize, so this person realizes that they are getting a deal. So that's $10 off for you. So that's an important thing to mention. Hey, listen, I'm getting $10 off. Most people, if they get a coupon for something in the mail or something through some sort of um, uh, you know, an email coupon or something that gives them $10 off, People use that all day, all the time. So you're basically telling the person, look, I'm giving you 10 bucks off and it's yours if you want it. So now you're just kind of dangling it out there for the person. Here you go. It's yours. You want it. All you got to do is click the button. Thanks a lot. Still keeping it positive. I knew he was going to take it. I just absolutely knew it. And within, I'd say, a minute of sending that, here you go. Great news. Your item sold. So what he said as final offer, um, you know, I, I, I suppose it's true in the sense that he didn't, he's, he's not sending along another offer, obviously, but f the way you would really interpret that is that's the most he's going to pay is 1850 but it's not true. You see, he's willing to go up a little bit. Now, you might counter what I'm saying and say, well, okay, big deal. You went up a dollar 50 cents, but this was just an example. I have other examples of things like this that have happened where the stakes are much higher. It's just something that just occurred to most recently, so this is the, the example that I chose, but if you just extrapolate the numbers out, um, you know, you could do this with if someone was, um, you know, you had an item for three hundred dollars and someone offered you a hundred and fifty, and then you said no, I'll do two hundred twenty-five, and they said no, I'll do a hundred and eighty-five, and then you said no, I'll do a hundred and ninety-nine, and so it's the same, you know, same thing. You just, you know, put, you just expand the numbers out, and you know, in that situation, um, you know, it, it, that that winds up being a lot more money for you. So. Uh, just just make sure you know your research, you do your research on your items, and you know whether or not you have the leverage or not. Always try to put yourself in a situation where you're the one with the leverage because then you'll be able to come out with the better deal in the end. And you know what? Over time, these $1.50s add up. $1.50 here, $1.50 there, $3 here, $5 here, $7 here. Throughout the course of the year, that adds up to a lot of money. So, um, you know, Make sure that um, you have that information at hand and that you use this information I'm telling you with negotiation going forwards uh, to make better deals for yourself. Uh, as I said, make sure you check out my other negotiation video. I will be doing more of these over the course of the year, so make sure you come back and check back for more. If you like this video, very important that you hit that like button down below. Give it a nice big tap, nice big thumbs up. Also, very, very important that you subscribe to this channel. tells me that you're liking these videos, that you want to see more of them. And uh, also, please make sure you drop a comment down below. That is always helpful for me. If you have certain negotiation tactics that you like to use, I'm sure other people would like to hear from those as well. Or if you have topics that you would like to see for other types of negotiation situations, please let me know. Be happy to do some other videos on these things in the future. Uh, some other things is just make sure um, if you're interested in my new uh, Facebook group, it is the Reselling Resource Center. Just type that in on Facebook and 
ask to join and I'll be happy to let you in just as long as everything with your profile looks legitimate. It's a new uh, reselling uh, group that I have formed to help people just discuss topics related to reselling in a friendly, warm, supportive environment, but also one in which you can promote your brand without spamming. A lot of the Facebook groups don't allow any type of YouTube links. Don't allow any type of links to your your eBay store, or anything like that, because it's considered self promotional. Um, I'd like to have a situation where people could be free to promote their brand and promote their uh, items or some of their listings if they want to, just as long as it's not done in a spammy way. Uh, I'm totally open to that. So I'd love to see you come and join the group and try to get some more members. With that, I'm going to bid you adieu, and I will see you all at the next video. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.